Greetings, pilgrims, and welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage. And today we're going to be talking about creating this molding or trim. Uh, also, this is actually baseboard, then we have chair railing, and then we have crown molding. So I've done a lot of research into this. I have a project that involves a very large house, and I wanted to make it as physically accurate as I can. So the first step is, of course, to do a bunch of research. So my research has led me that most people call this just molding, trim, that sort of thing. And actually, it's called either a cope or cove uh, trim or molding. And then if it is a piece like this that goes outward from the wall, not concave, but convex, then this is called crown molding. And then we have chair railing, which is this piece in the middle here. And this goes about waist high. And contrary to popular belief, that is not to make sure that your chairs don't bump against the wall. But uh, there's some history behind that. But anyway, so I did a bunch of research and then got to, to work here on creating the molding. So let's talk about how we made this. Quite simply, these are your basic plane and then some divisions into it. So here I just cut some lines into it and made my shape. And then different section of length. So I have here, this is a 6 inch, 1 foot, 2 foot, 4, and 8 foot. And then I have your inner and outer corners. And then I have a little end cap piece here. And this piece would go you know, on the end here to kind of take us from molding back flush against the wall. Works out quite nicely. Now to create these corners, very simply, I took one of my straight pieces here. And what we're gonna do is make another duplicate and we'll rotate that 90 degrees. There we are. And then we'll move them along here. You would line them up perfectly. For this example, I'm just going to show you really quickly how we did one about doing this. Now I'm going to take these edges and extrude outwards. There we go. Then I'm going to take the same edges over here and control E again and extrude outwards. Now that I have both of these pieces, we'll go to our object selection mode here, select them both. And under here in mesh, I'm going to say Boolean's Union. I want to choose my options here and say apply. And there we go, our union based upon the edge. And you can also do uh, normal, you can try out different things. If you want an inner curve, you'd have to do that. Now for this outer curve here, we'll call that good. And what you're gonna have to do here is go to your polygons and clean up the edges a little bit. This particular shape, something about this in, out, and in curve in the middle, it did require a little bit of cleanup in the middle here. So if I zoom in, so this little piece here, so if I delete these, you'll see there's actually some internal faces that we don't need. So I did have to do a little bit of cleanup there, but once you clean all that up, you get a nice clean edge here. The inner corner here was much faster. And then all the different different lengths here is just this piece. Uh, if I select this guy, duplicated and moved his edges out by exacting amounts. Now for the chair uh, railing here, this was pretty simple, same kind of deal. And then the crown molding, of course, took a little bit longer because there's just more iterations to it. It's a fancier shape. This came out really nice. I'm very happy with it. So once I've got all that done, then we have to unwrap it and we lay them all out. So what I'm going to do here is unhide all, and you'll see my working space here. I've even got sections for the wall sections, a door. I've got some little boxes for lining things up. Now if I select all of my pieces here, these are all the pieces I've been working with, these pieces and these pieces here. All of these are actual working pieces. So now if I look at my UVs for this, you'll see the UVs, everything's all nice lined up in rows, and they're by section. So this is one section here, this is the, uh, the baseboard at the bottom here. As you can see here, we work our way up the wall. Here is the chair railing in the middle, and then the crown molding at the top. And then all of our extra little bits here, these are just the tiny little bottom pieces here that you'll never see, but we get those all just in a little bundle over here so we don't forget about them. Okay, so now with that complete, we jump over to uh, Substance Designer to make our material here. Okay, so here's our object, and we can see, we can zoom in a little bit here. And what we were looking for is this very particular pattern in here, and I'll show you how we go about creating that pattern. So right here, we start with a, <clears throat> excuse me, actually start here, with the anastropic noise, and then here we have our directional noise, blending those together on an add linear dodge. What we're looking for is sort of like a wood grain, but then what it, what's happened here is it's been sanded down and then painted over, and the paint will actually fill into those little gaps. 
So we're looking to create that effect ultimately. All right, so we move forward here and we're gonna blend on a screen this black and white spot. So what that does for us is it just sort of lightens up the areas and it breaks up some of this a little bit. So that's quite good, nice. And then here we're gonna blend it again and with one of my favorite nodes here, the Fractal Sum Base. This is a great just kind of noisy but in a sort of predictable pattern. It's very nice. So we're gonna blend that in there again on screen. As you can see here, we're starting to get that effect of some things look like they've been filled in. It looks like it's a little hard to see on the video, but there's a lot more graininess to this right now. Okay, so then what I needed was a little bit more graininess, and this might be coming out a little bit better on the video now. And what I've done here is I'm just gonna subtract only a 0.15, very, very small. But what we're doing is taking the black and white spots and I was just scaling it out to make this a lot more fine grain. And there we go, we've got that going on. That's looking really nice. So that is gonna be a direct feed into our, our main diffuse, our base color. But let's jump down here first and talk about the rest of this. Obviously our metallic, totally black, this is not a metal object. Now, for our normal here, which we could just reuse from here instead. See, this would be the same thing doing that. There we go, we've already optimized our graph a little bit. This is a transform with the side scale set to I think something like 2000. And what this gives me is very similar to this directional noise, but just a little bit different. And this has a nice pattern to it. So then I throw this into a levels to do some adjustment, and this directly becomes our roughness. So you can see here as I move the light around a little bit, there we go, how that roughness is playing in there. Again, this is a very subtle effect, so it might be difficult to see it on the video, but on my screen here, it's looking really nice. Okay. So with that, we're gonna take this and throw that in as our normal. And again, very subtle, but this is a nice little thing. It'll catch the light. The paint will look amazing. And then this will also become our height. So we'll just throw that down there. Now, to talk about our dirt, we first have to get certain uh, inputs here that we don't currently have. So for these models, yes, you could throw these into Substance Designer and bake out some uh, maps from it. <clears throat> Pardon me, but I was already in Substance Painter working on a different project and I found a neat little trick So I just wanted to show that to you. So what I need here are my curvature, ambient occlusion, world space normal, and position And it's kind of hard to get a position out of here and getting these maps by themselves is a little difficult But I found a quick little way. So let's jump over to Painter So here we are in Painter and you can see I have loaded in a different version of the model this is just my, my same working layout here. <clears throat> Pardon me. But with the working layout, what I was able to do is use the baker uh, up here, bake textures, and I baked out my textures, and you can see them all here, normal, world space, <clears throat> AO, curvature, position. So now I need to get these exported, but when I go to export textures, it's gonna give me the base maps that you use in a game engine, so it's gonna give me my base color, my normal, my um, metallic, and my roughness, but I want to get like my position and my curvature out. So again, you can do this entirely inside of Substance Designer, but I happen to be here and I, th I had a thought and it is pretty clever. So what I did here was put a fill layer and down here, very important, I put the metallic to nothing. I put the roughness to all the way at the top. Didn't touch the normal or the height, but for my base color, if I select it, now I can search for, say I want my world space normal. There we go, world space normal. And now it's gonna display that as a totally flat texture. And now what I did was I just exported the textures over and over again, it was only four times. And the what com becomes the base color for this model's textures, I just renamed it as each of the individual inputs that I wanted here. So I renamed it as curvature for the curvature. An AO I could get as a base export anyway. World space normal I could get. Position would be difficult, but here's my position map. So that was pretty cool. And if I go over here to the Explorer, you can see in our resources, I just named them pretty bold so I know what they are. Drag and drop them into here. And now we bring in a dirt node because we do want to put some dirt to this, but we don't want it to be too dirty. For my purposes, these had to be relatively clean. This is a well-maintained mansion but I did want a little bit of grime just so that it looks like it's aged a bit 
that it's you know it's been a few years since it was constructed but it's not in disrepair okay so what we do here is just dirt node it wants these inputs we throw them in there and now we're going to blend and this uh, that I have here is a color node come on there we go this is black I just docked it there I'm going to blend black over top of white or whatever color this is actually a color you could expose the color for your actual molding the the overall color so I'm going to put black on top of that and this right here puts out a mask and we're going to put that right into the opacity so then this is what we get so very subtle a little bit of grime and noise in there looking good now we're going to blend that with this that we've been creating this whole time this nice pattern here and when we blend those two together you'll see that uh, again it's difficult to see on the other screen here but we get a really nice combination of both we get the pattern in there the striations along with our our dirt and our you know a little bit of grime just a touch of grime and I'm gonna throw that into our base color here uh, base color yeah those should be connected there we go okay so that is our base color this is our normal very very subtle I could even reduce this further and our roughness Now you will notice we do have one problem with this and it's really not hard to fix uh, but we have some areas where it you can see it better in UV when we get there where you can see the line there we go you can see the line there and that's just a matter of properly lining them up on the texture sheet uh, I did just kind of throw them in there a little bit but the idea behind it is what I wanted to share for the most part and this material is pretty simple uh, very very simple compared to some of our previous weeks and I uh, just want to show that to you okay so now we jump over to UE and uh, we're jumping to every piece of software this week <laughs> and here is our final little setup inside of UE and I do have one piece that is driving me nuts this little corner piece here for our base uh, baseboard it has been set correctly just like all the others it's been set just like this one just like this guy all the hard and soft edges should be perfectly fine <clears throat> and yet he refuses to be properly smooth so I think I'm going to go about recreating him I want to show you here's our material inside of UE it's looking really nice and just threw some some lights in here so we can see our way around and now let's take a little test run there we go alright and we can walk right up to it we can see our molding there it's looking really nice and this will catch really good lighting there's no real actual lighting in here this is just a uh, just a little you know our little examples room so we just have a basic light but when we have actual lighting and bounced lighting and proper materials on the walls to accent this you know these will look amazing and already with the uh, the modeling that we've done very simple all I did was look up uh, baseboard chair railing and crown molding profiles is the term you're looking for and by looking at those profiles that will give you this shape to model and then putting these together is really not that hard now here inside of UE we can create some uh, some uh, blueprints and these blueprints will have you know just a corner piece just a straight piece and then what I'll do is put together some full-on sections so it'll say corner piece plus a five foot section on either side and then we can snap together in, in every room we can just say I need 10 feet and then I need have a corner that sort of thing and the reason I did the sizes that we did is I have one uh, six inches, one foot, two foot, four, and eight, because there's no room inside the house that is larger than 16 feet. So that would be two eight foot sections, not even because we need room for the corners, obviously. So what I did was I set it that way in order to allow us to have a big section. We're not taking up so many draw calls or so many models when we have the ability to have one that takes up that whole wall and there's usually something in the way there's usually a chair a couch uh, you know some sort of a um, curtain so these sections will be fine that way we're not making a bazillion sections for no good reason so anyway here is our final molding trim uh, just kind of looking at it at different angles for you here and it worked out really nicely uh, one final thing is if I look at my example piece that we have here here he is I did have to make one change and here the collision complexity I set this to use complex complex collision as simple because the original project default is it's 
awful. It's you know it blocks me from getting anywhere near <laughs> in the corners here to see it. So I said no 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 let's not do that. Let's go ahead and oh let's go ahead and change that to use complex as simple, and that uses the actual geometry as the collision. Now it's not totally correct for what we'll have in the final game. Uh, we'll have some very nicely quickly made up little box models that are the precise shapes and all we would need for there is the actual walls because you're not going to be able to go through molding but for this example just so that we can walk around it and make sure that we can see it and the material for this inside of UE is really nothing special it's just the outputs from uh, substance thrown in here as our individual inputs and for this uh, ultimately we will have a proper roughness as well and the roughness all this will be packed into an arma and then thrown in here and so that's your, your standard material setup I don't really think we need to go over that the, what was important today was how do we go from our modeling of the, the trim uh, creating a material uh, a clever way of doing some exports to get some maps that are usually a little bit harder to create and then of course we want to throw it in engine and take a look at how it's looking in engine and as I get up close to this you can see it's looking pretty nice. Now, of course, uh, this is, for my purposes, a little cleaner, but I know that um, typically we do uh, realistic style. You would want to have some little dents and you know crevices and cuts and that sort of thing in it. So feel free to add that if that is uh, your desire. But uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed very much. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. I want to thank you so much for all of the interest and input into the series. I really hope that it's helping you guys. And uh, So, again, if you have questions, let me know. Let's figure things out together. Let's discover new processes. Uh, I'm always excited to learn something new. So, as always, keep practicing, get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.